One of the other questions that came in this week is about footwear and foot care. And while that could be a much, much longer video, I will try to keep it compressed down to uh, something that's, uh, that's pretty reasonable uh, for you know, your basic stuff. So first of all, in my opinion, uh, does it have to be a boot? And the answer to that is no, all right? We used to actually wear the uh, Merrill version of this. These are uh, Salamis. Uh, we used to wear the Merrill version of this. In fact, we called them TST shoes. We sold it half a bag dead like that. Uh, TST standing for uh, time sensitive target. And we had those shoes so that you could, uh, you know, take your shoes off and take a nap while you're waiting on a trigger for the target to happen. Jump up, slap your shoes off, get in the truck and go. It also never occurred to me until I got ready to make this video that it's probably weird to get briefed up on. You're going to go burst me down at his house and have a special pair of shoes so that you can take a nap so that somebody can just wake you up and you can go burn this dude down at his house. But neither here nor there. My point is, this little, you know, bullshit slip-on tennis shoe, all right, I did, and my team I was with did assault, you know, half fucking targets in Iraq with some shit like this on. So it's a lot more like a sneaker than a boot, I right, but it does work, all right? And like I said, the Merrill version of this is, uh, is better, all right? If you're gonna get the Salomons, make sure you get the tactical one because the uh, non-tactical ones have some little uh, reflecty bullshit right here, which is not, you know, optimal for what we're doing. So these are, uh, these are fine, all right, as long as you're not carrying too heavy of a load. All right, we'll get to that part here in a second. As well as, it's almost worth having a pair of these in the old uh, rucksack so if your other boots get you know, soaked <coughs> or you just want to take them off after a long day, all right, you can put something on. <coughs> this is another difficult thing for, uh, for people to understand that haven't been to <coughs> like the, uh, the fucking Great Jihad uh, overseas. All right. If you're in a real tactical situation, you will never even take both boots off at the same time. All right, so you cut with both boots off and you gotta fight back and you gotta run. All right, now you're fucking barefoot and uh, you're not gonna be having a good time. So something like this is kind of your uh, relaxing shoe for you know around the uh, patrol base at the end of a long night. All right, again, the uh, Merrells are great. Uh, the Salomons are great as long as you get the attack uh, All right, moving on to uh, actual boots. Oh. One other thing about the uh, tennis shoe or this versus a real boot. While these are more comfy, all right, and they'll definitely work with a, with a lighter load, we're doing that kind of shit, and you're talking just armor, a gun, some charges, some hand grenades. I never even bothered to, to weigh all that shit out. I don't know what, what it weighed. Right, with the Rucky Ruck, when I think twice about this, yeah, probably just because it's not as much support from talking about carrying, you know, a bunch of bullshit. All right, which puts us into the boot category. Oh. Also, this will last about a third as long as a boot under uh, equal conditions. All right, boots pretty much the standard. All right, now there's different styles of boots and I'm also gonna say this, more so than anything else that we're gonna talk about, your boot is personal preference, all right, because everybody's feet fit differently. So one of the things you wanna do, go through the painful process of find a boot that works for you. If you find a boot that works for you, buy two pairs at least, all right, of that exact same boot, same color, same, fucking everything, all right, preferably within like, you know, a week of manufacture so that it's all exactly the same. Uh, brands that have worked for me, I like Scarpa's really well. Uh, this has been a fantastic boot. They fit my feet really well. Uh, they are pricey, but they are pretty awesome. All right, the thing about the Scarpa's, they have a very stiff sole, right, which I definitely like when I'm carrying like heavier loads. If you're talking about something uh, like a lighter duty boot, all right, so I'm not carrying as heavy of stuff or I'm not like actually hiking up the side of a mountain. All right, Oboes has worked very well for me, but as you can see there, the sole is a lot more flexible. This is kind of actually between like a boot and a tennis shoe, all right, but it does work very well in a lot of applications. All right, the only thing that I actually generally discourage is a work boot style boot. Now, we're gonna get some blowback here because dudes are like, well, I work in them all day and I, you know, I walk and uh, I, I don't have any problems. But here's the primary difference, all right? Hiking boots tend to be tighter in the heel versus work boots. All right, work boots have, are you know, basically made to stand on concrete or a hard packed job site. So they give a little bit more flex. So yes, they are more comfortable if I'm mostly standing doing my job or walking from, from uh, you know, job site to job site. Because when I'm walking from job site to job site, I'm probably not walking that fast. I'm not walking the same way that I'm going to be if I'm, you know, moving out trying to make distance to an objective. All right. A hiking boot with its tighter heel, all right, arguably a little bit less comfy, all right, but it doesn't, uh, rub, it doesn't rub blisters on you the same way that a, a work boot does. 
I have tried this. I have brands of work boots that I really wanted to work out for me. I but tend to be a little bit of heel slip in these if I'm moving fast. True traditional hiking boot, a little bit less comfy. All right, but overall, I right, do not get blisters. All right, because it it actually that tightness of fit actually prevents me from uh, from getting uh, getting everything rubbed raw. Okay, that's also something that you want from your. This is also why the boot part is such an odd fit. All right, that's what I'm looking for. All right, I want it to be just not tight, but what's the word I'm looking for here. I don't want it to be tight. I don't really want it to be snug, but I do want it to be like a perfectly matched uh, bite in the, uh, the back of the heel. All right, the toe box, again, I want it to be pretty close. All right, I want a little bit of expansion there for when my foot starts getting swollen up from, uh, from walking. All right, but I do not want my little toe to start rubbing on the, uh, the outside of the boot either. So it's a very, it's a very fine balance of, of what you want in a in footwear there. Only possible exception to the, uh, the work boot policy. I have several clients that have, and I'm gonna get a set probably next month, of the uh, Origin brand boots, which is uh, Jocko's company out of Maine. Supposedly they have uh, fixed that heel stuff, so I'm gonna try a set of those. If you wanna try a set of those, cool, but they're a little bit on the pricey side. Right. Now, what about military boots versus hiking boots? Well, in my experience, military boots that you get from Surplus or something like that are nowhere near as good as a real hiking boot, with the possible exception of Dan or Brandt. Okay, all right. And a lot of that is function of cost. Uh, this is like a $250 or $300 boot, all right? Whereas most of your boots that are made for the military are 100 to 150 at, a, at full retail, all right? So they just tend to be not as good of a boot. As well as most of the shit that goes into making that boot military certified has more to do with the, uh, the color spectrum and the number of fucking eyelets and other shit that uh, idiot sergeant majors worry about for their goddamn uniform guidance rather than actual function.